What's going on, y'all? You know who it is. Mr. Warmack, a.k.a. Low Rent, a.k.a. The Ignorant American, a.k.a. The Truth As You Know It, a.k.a. Dirty Business, a.k.a. The Jet Jaguar of YouTube. Okay, folks, this is uh, Mr. Warmack, and I'm definitely in the building. And I, today I want to talk about four topics that are definitely going to hurt or help black folks as they go on their quest to try to empower themselves, as they try to... Uh, go forward as far as negotiating as a people so uh i'm gonna talk about these four things and we'll see how we can go okay okay the first topic i want to talk about as you see here is that picture right there called the two black americas and this is one of the things i think is really hurting black folks as a whole now the two black americas focuses on if you if you can look at the picture i got them all oh, let me let me reference the picture first before I uh, go into the, you can go get this picture at uh, www.blackmenwakeup.com. This is where I got the picture from. Now, the picture is the two Black Americas. And like there's what they're trying to say is there's two different types of Black people in America, and you and, and under this guideline you fall under one of these two categories. Type one or the first type, you're the Black community bred Blacks. Like, these are the black people who they say are, you're raised in a predominantly black area. Uh, your upbringings and lives have, result, have revolved around black people, black media, and black perspective. Uh, the majority of the relationships and influence come from there. You know, they are isolated from mainstream America, and because of this isolation, this community has its own set of rules and problems that blacks from other communities are not affected by. And do not relate to black stereotypes and issues come from community and these types of black people type one blacks frequently make their mistake of believing that all blacks are affected by their issues but it's simply not true okay before i talk about this i'm going to talk about type two just give you a definition the type two blacks as they as they describe are the alternate community bred blacks these are the black people raised in communities outside the predominantly black community their influences are of multiple ethnicities, races, and cultures. And due to these multiple influences, they have completely different perspectives, values, value systems, and life results. These black people are from a completely different world as type one black people, and many times do not relate to the problems that are not included in the type one issues. Type two blacks represent a majority of progressive and forward-thinking blacks in America. Although this set of blacks have their own issues, these issues are not usually the same as type one blacks. These are a completely different set of people. Okay, that last sentence should tell you what, what the problem is right there. I know a lot of you people won't recognize the problem, but this last sentence is how type 2 blacks are a completely different set of people. Right then and there, you're, you're, you're castigating you, your whole community. Right then and there, you're, set, you're putting in the divisions of hatred and seeds of hatred amongst your own people. So this is how can you come together as a group when you yourself are division or creating division in, in, amongst the seeds of your own people, now, type one blacks are basically the blacks from the hood or any majority black area. And what they're saying is the results around their hood, this and that, shape them. Type two blacks are blacks who were raised in they, maybe the suburbs or out in the out in the sticks, you know. And they're saying you were raised around a melting pot of people. Now here's my problem. What do you say a person like me? I was born in Crown Heights, Brooklyn, which if you look it up is 90% black. I moved to a place outside of Pittsburgh called Consul, Pennsylvania, which is overwhelmingly about 90, 90 to 5% white people. So where do I fall in? And I live in Columbus, Ohio right now, and I live in an area which is 90% black people. When I w went back to New York, I was in the 90% black people area. And every area I go to is 90% black people. But yet, I have, I, have, I have both of these. I have type 1 and type 2 characteristics. Because yes, I am progressive. Yes, I, I do relate with other, uh, not relate, I interact with other races. You want to know why? Because I, no, I have no disparaging comments or negativity towards other races. Yes, I have white friends. And, white, and let, me, let me explain something to you. My, my Italian friends, my Polish friends, Russian friends, all of them. They are concerned with helping their people too. 
they are not. I mean, yes, they their their seeds are maybe a little different. Their seeds are maybe like Jewish. I mean, which is wrong, and we talked about this, but that's where their seeds are. Their seeds aren't divided in blacks because well, you're from the city, you're from the country. Well, automatically you can't. No, here's what you got. We all have a common bond with slavery. We all have common bonds coming up through all the way up to the civil rights. If you choose to segregate yourself, which I can't believe a black person wrote this myself. That just goes to show you how black people are divisive in their in of themselves. If you want to create divisive nature, you can't cry about black people can't meet or can't get together. When you see that, you have to you have to take somebody has to take responsibility for putting that up there. Now I can't get mad if that's how you feel, but I do know you cannot have that as your uh, overwhelming uh, ideal because look. Black people have it the same no matter where you go. There's black people on welfare in, in, in Crown Heights. There's black people on welfare in Compton. There's black people on welfare in Southside Chicago. There's black people on welfare in Concord, New Hampshire. There's black people not doing so good in Pittsburgh. There's black people not doing so good in Seattle. There's black people not doing so good in Wichita, Kansas. There's black people not doing so good in Plano, Texas. There's black people not doing so good in, in Largo, Florida. See what I'm trying to say? And I know it's going to fly over your head, but when you create this divisiveness, what good does, is, is that doing? You yourself create the own divisiveness, and you won't cry about black people can't get together. Black people can't get together as long as stuff like this go on. What you need to do, you need to form coalitions and fight. Well, well, let me, before I go, let me stop right there, and let me, let me talk about... Okay, as you can see, I have a picture of a female with light and dark. And this is basically the same thing. This is basically my same, my same rhetoric, my speech, my diatribe as the two Black Americas. This is another uh, episode or another another conflict that's gone in the Black community is the light skin versus dark skin, and uh, it's portrayed by the mythical Willie Lynch letter. Now, I see. I've seen this personally. I've heard this. The problem is, is Maybe dark-skinned people feel that light-skinned because they're lighter have more privileges than them, and maybe that some light-skinned people feel that since people other people are dark-skinned, they they shouldn't have many as privileges as they do. Now let me get let me get back to the point with the two Black Americas. This is divisive. If you don't know what divisive means, look it up. All you're doing is and and like I said, what it is is there's there's people in there who want to throw stuff like this in that previous letter I wrote. That, that not that I wrote that I presented to you. You want to know why? Because it keeps division going. These are two reasons why in the black community we cannot get together. And I'm gonna show you some more reasons why you won't you won't be able to get together on everything. But when you see dark skin, light skin, it's the same. Listen to what I said about the two black Americas. It's the same principle, the same common threads as with light skin, dark skin. Which I, I think is silly fucking as all hell. Excuse my French because you don't see white people do this. You may see, you see Hispanics do it because like it's like if, like if you go to Brazil, I mean and by the FYI Brazil had the most slaves, has the most blacks out, outside of, as far as Africa goes because most of the slaves went to Brazil. We're back to the lecture in hand, but I hear this argument all the time: light skin, dark skin. And it's usually people who are ignorant. You gotta understand this. I mean, and I know, I know our people. Are, in the back heart, our people are willfully ignorant. And when I say willfully, there's a lot of people who choose to swim in pigs and like pigs and shit. No matter what you say to them or tell them or try to help them, they will not come out of their coma. But as with the Black Americas, two Black Americas, this is this topic. You gotta get get over it because let me let, let, let me put it down to the basic details. And I don't like to cuss in these videos, my podcast, because I, but I have to bring it to you, to the truth. A light-skinned black person and a dark-skinned black person are going to a Klan rally. You know what the Klan's going to say? Who are those two niggers? So that's my that's my point with this. So the the same the same talk I want to give you guys about the two black Americas is the same talk I'm giving you about the light-skinned, dark-skinned. So. This is one of the, another major issue we're going to have to come over and go through the hurdles. Because this is going to be a touchy sip topic right here. Because it's basically the same thing as the two black Americans. So, 
Okay, I'm going to move on to the next topic. All right, as you can see this uh, picture right here, I got uh, guys from the Best Man's Holiday, and as you can see the bottom how they're all in interracial relationships. This is going to be another main principle, another topic that the black community has going to have to come to grips with and adjust with if you're trying to form coalitions. Because what are you going to do with what are you going to do with these men and women who are who are in interracial relationships? What are you going to do with them? Because I'm just going to give you my opinion. You can't scream black empowerment, or this is this is this is goes for every race. But I'm thrown generalizing because I'm black. I want to talk about I'm talking about black issues. But this goes for every race. So this doesn't. If you're in an interracial relationship, you cannot scream about how proud you are to be what you are, because you didn't choose to be with the same of that race and whatever whatever man. You, you look. This is you can be with whoever you want to be. It doesn't affect my life. It doesn't affect the next man's life. Unless it affects my life, then I have to come in and, and make my choices. But uh, this is what your black people have to deal with because me personally, they have no say. So if, if, if these people are not are they want they can help the black community, but they're more, they're coming from a more of a standpoint of a like a socialism type deal, or it's more about the society as a whole, as far as worrying about their own particular race. And to me, when I see black people talk about, you know, black empowerment, this and that, then you find out they're married to somebody outside the race. It's like, no, nah, you, you, you're corny, man. You're corny, chick, because how can I take you serious about black power, black empowerment, or helping the community when you decided not to help the community yourself by marrying the, the opposite sex of what you were? Because to me, this it's, it's corny. Look at this. I mean, it's true. I mean, and women flock to that movie. And look at those guys on the bottom. And unless they pull a Sammy Sosa, them chicks look white to me. I mean, but this is what the black community is going to have to come to heads with and come to grips with because you're going to have to deal with this. Because you, I, I'm in, I'm in groups right now. I'm in uh, uh, African American uh, geared groups where I have to. I talk about this. People get mad at me. I don't take these people serious. I, I think they're corny because they want to. Talk, they want to talk about black people this, black people that. Well, look, who you, look where you're coming from. You're coming from the perspective of you're 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 not in a, a black relationship yourself so this is another area and this is gonna be this is gonna be touchy because a lot of uh, i know i have family members i know you may have family members you're gonna have to ask what are they gonna do when it, i mean when it, when you're gonna have to ask whatever if you're forming coalitions and you're trying to move like the agenda forward and every group has an agenda by the way you're gonna try to make some political progress what are you gonna do with these type of people you have to ask yourself so, I mean, I'm just keeping it real because if I don't keep it real, somebody else might fool you, pull the wool over your eyes. I don't know. So, I'm going to move on to the next topic. But like, as I say, I'm want, I want to I'm gonna make this point clear. You cannot be in another race, a mixed race marriage, and proudly wear, banging the drum of your race. Because if you, if you were proudly banging the drum of your race, your, your significant other would be of your race. And I'm not. Done, I don't want to hear. Well, I just happen to fall in love because you know that's everybody's excuse. If you wanted it, you could have. It. You choose not to want it, so you choose not to have it. So these are the type of people where you're going to have to come down and turn turn the grips and make some difficult decisions. So I'm gonna move on to the next group, and we'll go from there. Ah, uh, yes, here we go. One of my favorites to talk about because nobody wants to answer. This is what you're going to have to deal with right here. This is going to be one of the hardest, outside of your interracial relationships, this is going to be one of your hardest ones to deal with black people because you want to know why? Because these are your sons, these are your daughters, these are your nieces, your nephews, these are your grandkids, these are your co-workers, these are people you may used to hang out before they decide to become this part. But you're going to have to deal with the homosexual agenda in the black community. See, the homosexual agenda is more powerful than the black community, and, and than the black agenda. Hell, the homosexual community agenda is more powerful than a lot of white agendas. If I want to say, I'd say it's up there. It's high, and you want to know why? Because the homosexuals, and and when I say homosexuals, don't get it messed up. I'm not just referring to white homosexuals. I'm referring to Hispanics. I'm referring to blacks, 
Asians, Indians, they all pool the resources together and now they have political action committees. Why do you think Obama turned his, made his uh, change about gay marriage in two or three days? Because he won them votes. Obama was steadfast not in favor of gay marriage until they had their meeting, until he, he, a certain assurances came down the pike, and all of a sudden, hey, he's a proponent, and hey, he's, he wants he, they should have the same rights as the, a married couple. Come on, man, this, this, this Bible alone, you know that's wrong, but that's a different topic for another day. And what I'm saying is, this is going to be a hard decision because here's here's my main theory about the homosexuals that we're gonna have that you're gonna have. The homosexuals are going to have to pick a side because there you can't have two struggles and one agenda. Hey, I don't mind working with anybody. I, I can work with anybody, but there's going to be a time and a point that there's going to be a conflict that will arise, and then that conflict they're going to have to choose a side. And I'm going to tell you right now, judging by the past, and, and nobody can refute me for what I'm saying, the black homosexuals will ride with the black with the homosexuals. Period. They will. Like I said, where were they for your voting rights? Where were they to help you fight for affirmative action? Where were they? They were nowhere to be found, but yet you guys want to hop up and down like a TJ Jakes, like he just ordered a piece of chicken from churches or something. And you won't break your neck for these people who won't even... Who, you, so look, man, you won't break your neck for people who won't even break a fingernail for you. But this is what's going to have to happen. You're, and me personally... Uh, that some hard choices are going to be made because, look, like I said, I don't care who you're with. You can, but when I have to, when I have to decide, like, like in my state, we're going to vote on this, and like I'll probably vote no because I don't believe in that. But like I said, we're going to get it rammed down our throats by the federal government anyway, so it ain't really going to matter. But uh, as I back to the lecture at hand, you're going to have to deal with these because these are your sons, your daughters, your brothers, your mothers, your dads, your son, your uh, sisters. These are the people that you know. These are the health, These are the heartfelt, you know, comments I'm making because I know homosexuals. I mean, like I said, that's their business. But you cannot have two struggles under one roof. And that's the problem you're going to have with the homosexual agenda. Sooner or later, they're going to feel comfortable. Well, we're doing this. And for all we know, you could have some infiltrators in it already. So... I just wanted to brush up upon the four groups that we're really going to have to... I mean, there's... I could have named many more. I could I could have named maybe maybe less. But I feel, these are the four that I feel that I see we, that we talk about. Like, like I said, I'm in a lot of my Facebook groups. These are the four topics I, or areas that we usually touch up on. I'm not going to talk about blaming the white man because I'm everybody who knows me knows I don't do that. I'm like, at the end of the proverbial day... You make choices in life, and if you don't want it, if you make the bad choices, hey, it's on you. But, uh, oh, by the way, let me let me give you guys an FYI. Everybody's talking about the Brazilian heritage, setting the third. Well, like I said earlier, Brazil got more slaves than we do by and far and large. So, if they're getting Brazilian hair, hopefully they're getting it from a black chick, huh? Well, you guys hope, but I have to go now. I'm going to do another podcast. I'm going to keep this thing running. You know, if you hear sound in the background, it's more likely like I'm I'm in a room that, with the air conditioner running. So, thank you for listening and jump, say something. What, I mean, this is gonna be your future, so you gotta do something. All right, peace.